equally grateful to Center for Islamic Mediterranean Studies, Muslim University for Foreign Studies, Center for Islamic Area Studies, Kyoto University, Japan. So I am also grateful to all of them for giving me this opportunity to share my view. Excuse and me, Professor, can you speak you. louder? Sorry, we can't hear you well. Can you speak louder, please? Sorry. Uh, are you listening? It is all right. It is okay. It the is voice okay. is okay, but a little bit lo uh, louder. Thank you. Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, now, as far as uh, the Sufism in Mediterranean, in Indian uh, continent is concerned, so you find that there is difference between the two because India is a different land in comparison to Egypt, Israel, Spain because India was was uh, uh, spiritually very strong and uh, one poet of Panipat, a town of uh, India, uh, he was a Persian poet. He said, Zamina Ishkas Hindustan Zamina Ke Ishk Ajaz Mazabe Kufrujira Haso Khasha Ke Ru Ad Ishk Masters Garo Divari Ru Arshik Parastas. That he says that in India we find the passion of love in, in its land and everywhere you will find love. People love each other and they spread love. Uh, the other important thing with India in comparison to the uh, Mediterranean region is concern that there are three basic scriptures on Sufism, which were written, like Kutuwat e Makkiyah by Ibn Arabi, then Awadif al Ma'arif by Sheikh Shahabuddin Sarwardi. The third important work on Sufism, Kashful Mehju, was written in Lahore during 11th century period by Sheikh Ali Azwari. And it was his great contribution because Allah Akbar, uh, who was a well-known Persian Udu poet of India and of Punjab, he says that Haki Punjab as the Mehuz in the West, Sugema as Mehruz in the West, that the land of the Punjab taught life after the coming of Sheikh Ali Azwari and our morning has become very shiny. So such examples we do not find in Mediterranean region. Why? Because the main reason is that these Sufis were scholarly people. They knew Arabic, Persian, they wrote books in Arabic and Persian, but in India, wherever they settled, they also learned the regional languages. For example, Sheikh Fariduddin Gan Shakar, who was the Khalifa of Sheikh Munibin Chishti uh, in Ajodan, a town of Punjab, he learned Punjabi and composed verses in Punjabi. When Guru Granth Sahib, a holy scripture of the Sikhs, was compiled by the Sikhs in India, so they included the verses of Shri Parivijin Gan in uh, 
the Guru and himself. Now, now, this we do not find in other parts of the world, or especially in Mediterranean region, in Spain, Egypt, or other parts, that Indians have accepted Sufism. Indians have accepted uh, Sufis, and Sufis have become the part and parcel of the life of Indian society and culture. I'll give another example of one uh, poet of Deccan, Sheikh Alauddin Alandi, a 14th century Sufi. Uh, he learned Deccani. He was a scholar of Persian. He was a scholar of Arabic. Uh, he says in Deccani, Ya Deccan mene Mola ki ajab shan dekta hu Darga banda nawaz mokka to roza mashayat ka madina sun. Now, uh, he says, in Deccan, I see something else. Uh, as far as Darga of Sayyid Muhammad Hussaini, Jesu Daraz, Banda Nawaz, is like Makkah, is like Kaaba. And the uh, Dargahs of other Sufis of Deccan are like Medina. So, such type of impression, such type of involvement, we do not find in the Mediterranean region that they consider in Egypt or in Israel or in Spain, uh, their uh, towns or the Khankas or the Dargahs or the Turkiyas of the uh, Sufis uh, in comparing uh, with the Makkah or Medina, which are the center of Islam. Uh, Sultan Ibrahim was one of the rulers of Dakan. He was very much influenced uh, from the Sufi ideas. So he said in one of his uh, verses in Deccani, Sare Musalmanan Arbistan Jaja Ku Haj Karte hai. Hey Ibrahim, to Inas Dono Ki Bar Jarat Karna Soon. That Muslims of the world go to Makkah to perform Haj. O oh, Ibrahim, you perform the prayer at the Darga of Sayyid Muhammad Hussaini, Banda Nawaz, Gesu Daraz, in Gulbarga. So, such type of involvement uh, we do not find in uh, Mediterranean region that they accepted Indian Sufis as the center of Islam. On the other hand, we find Sheikh Sadullah Panipati, one Sufi. He translated Ramayana uh, from Sanskrit to Persian. Now, in Sita, there was, he was, she was expected by Ravan. So, uh, he said in one of his verses, Sanashra Perahan Kudya Nadida, to Jan Andartan Vasta Vastan Jan Nadida, that Sita was very pious, that nobody had seen her body, and her body was so pious that even the cross which she used to bear, uh, they can't see. Uh, uh, the body of uh, Sita. So not only they develop uh, nearness or the spiritual uh, with Muslim centers, but also with the Hindu avatars or Hindu devtas also. Uh, on the other hand, we find the Sufis of India followed the principle of communal harmony and they can they composed verses in Persian, Urdu, Punjabi, Bengali, Deccani, and uh, Gujarati. Uh, and they say, for example, Sheikh Amiruddin Firdausi, he says in one of his verses, Sharare Husn se tere nahi koi khali haram ka sang ho, patsar ho, ya kalisa. That no place of worship is free from 
or your life, whether it is the Sunday Asmat of Kaaba or uh, the stone of the uh, uh, temple or the uh, uh, the church, and he says there is no difference between all the three. Another Sufi says, "Sheikh Khayali, Haji Bara Kaaba." वह मन तारे पे दीदार तू खाना हमी जोया वह मन साये पे खाना he says that Haji the the pilgrim go to Mecca to perform Hajj but I don't go to perform Hajj I am basically to have a glance of him uh, he is searching the Kaaba but I am uh, searching the person who lives in Kaaba or who lives in this center uh, then sheikh barkhurdar uh, uh, says in one of his verses dila tawaf e dila kun agar khuda khai wagarna kaaba o bhutana har dua sangat that o oh people you worship the hearts of the people because as far as the kaaba is concerned or the temple is concerned or the Uh, church is concerned they are all built of one stone from the same stone they built kaaba they built a uh, temple they built the church so such type of concepts we do not find in the verses of the uh, mediterranean uh, even one of the important and well known uh, sufi poet mirza ghalib he was a persian as well as uh, uh, urdu poet he says hai pare karade graf se apna majood qibla ko ahle nazar qibla numa kehte hain that as far as the existence of the god is concerned it is beyond our imagination we can't imagine him as we say that uh, for example for he say for muslims that muslim consider that we know only god he says that no it is very difficult to understand god then in another verse he says hum muwahid hain hamara kesh hai tar ke rusum millat hai jab mit gayi azai ima ho gayi that uh, we are the followers of one god all are one whether they are hindus muslims christians buddhists whatever and when they all join together so there is no difference between the other and the uh, amir khusro the well known uh, persian poet of india and the murid of sheikh nizamuddin auliya he said har qoum raast rahe deen e wa qubla rahe that all the people are having the right path they are having their own direction to which they pray to god so don't consider that we are only find uh, following the right path all whether they are hindus muslims sikhs christians buddhists they are all following the right path they are all going to god and there is no difference between one and the other uh, then one deccani sufi uh, sheikh alandi said as uh, uh, maran abdul rahman jami said bande shudhi tark na sab kun jami ke jari ra fala ibn fala chizen o jami you have become the slave of god slave of love so now you forget who are you who was your father who was your grandfather now all are one so one the killing to be poet says shurfa go drowni bi chandheri raat wana puchat hai koi kaun tumhari jaat that when you are buried in the grave so it is very fearful and there nobody will ask what is your religion what is your caste what is your color what you are what you have done so he says that you are all one uh, then another sheikh taha said in deccani his verse taha jab mein aan ke so do sagri aur and lena hai to le chalo ujri ja ke that o taha leave your arrogance and uh, in this world whatever good you want to do 
you do because in the towns there was a weekly bazaar if you want to purchase anything you purchase because this weekly bazaar will be held after one week so this life is very short so whatever good you want to do you do it otherwise it will be over then other bullesha the well known poet of uh, sorry poet of punjab he said koi dur karo koi shor nahi hindu muslim do aur nahi this duality leaves this duality hindu muslims are not two they are all one so these and on the other hand we find that these indian sufis they compose verses for example in deccan these sufis have written chakki nama charkha nama and lohri lohri nama and in this chakki nama uh, where uh, the women were grinding a wheat so they were reciting these verses and while reciting they were remembering god they were remembering prophet they were remembering remembering the uh, uh, sufis and unity of uh, god unity of being and unity of human kind so when a woman when our grinding the wheat and reciting chakki nama so it has become the part of parcel of their thought so sufism basically penetrated in the mind of even the village women women and when she was uh, spinning the wheel uh, making the wheel and uh, so she was also uh, reading this uh, chakki nama when she was uh, uh, asking her son or daughter to sleep so she used to recite lori nama and these lori nama were written by the sufis so these lori uh, lori nama for basically sufi thought and they translated this sufi thought of quran the hadith of prophet muhammad uh, the uh, uh, rumi and hafiz maslavi into lori nama chakki nama and such so they transmitted these ideas through uh, the regional languages uh, i remember while i was being the director of uh, humanities and languages in jama in 2010 i organized this international seminar for sheikh ali hadri who compiled kashmir majood so i received a call from baba balji singh that i want to attend the inaugural session of this seminar i said you are most welcome he came and he told me that i want to present two photographs of the graves of sheikh ali hadri in uh, uh, lahore so i said you say something also so he said i I used to live in Lahore. After reciting Guru Granth Sahib, I used to go to Baba Darbar and used to pray. Pray. But after partition of India, when I migrated from Lahore to Delhi, so I can't go uh, to the grave of Sheikh Ali Hadri. So now I do pray in front of this, uh, in front of this uh, photo of the grave of Sheikh Ali Hadri. Now you just see. Uh, the impact and the devotion of uh, these people with the Sufis that Baba Balji Singh, he was a Sikh. He did not convert to the religion of Islam. He left his hometown. He left his uh, uh, house in a very bad condition. But even then, he was he still was having reverence and nearness with Sheikh Ali Hadri. So this was the impact of. Uh, Uh, the sufis of india which we do not find in the sufis impact of the sufis uh, in mediterranean region i again thank all the organizers and especially my friend professor mulafari for giving uh, me this opportunity to share my views thank you so much